Should you become a materials engineer in 2021? That is the question that this video is going to help you answer. But first, what is a materials engineer? Materials engineers study the properties, components, and characteristics of various materials. They are experts at using different materials in different products across many different industries. For example, when creating a new submarine, the hull of the submarine needs to be extremely resistant to salt water. A materials engineer would be on the team trying to come up with the best material to be used in that application. Materials engineers work for companies like Boeing trying to make their aircraft lighter and more environmentally friendly. They work for companies like Tesla and other auto manufacturers. And they actually create consumer products such as ice cream scoopers, which actually are a lot more complicated on the inside than you would expect. So what kind of education do you need to become a materials engineer? Well, according to the Occupational Information Network, 48% of practicing material engineers have a bachelor's degree, 10% have a master's degree, and 33% have a doctoral degree. It seems like materials engineers have a lot more education than civil, industrial, and mechanical engineers on average. In fact, they seem to have even more education than their managers. About 39% of engineering managers have a master's degree. But before going and getting a PhD in materials science, definitely take a look at job postings. We're actually going to go over the demand of materials engineers in the United States a little bit later in the video. But I will make this point before going and getting a PhD, definitely look at job postings and really look at the requirements of some of these companies of their material engineers. So how well are material engineers compensated? Well, first, this actually depends on which country you live in. I looked at the incomes of materials engineers in four different countries, and it isn't what you would think. In Canada, the median income for a materials engineer when converted to U.S. currency was $80,156. In the United States, the median salary for a materials engineer was found to be $95,640. In Germany, $102,092 when converted to USD. And interestingly, the land down under, Australia tends to pay material engineers a lot of money. The median salary down there is $121,244 when converted to USD. So as you can see, the United States is not the highest paying place right now for materials engineers. This is always subject to change though, as there's constantly currency fluctuations between the United States currency, Canadian currency, Australian currency, and the Euro. But in the United States, materials engineers do pretty well. When looking at average salary, materials engineers were the ninth highest paying engineering field in the United States where the average salary, not the median salary, was around $100,000 per year. Materials engineers tend to make a little bit more than civil, mechanical, industrial, and environmental engineers. And they have seen their wages grow over time. In the year 2000, the average base salary for a materials engineer was $60,420. This rose to $100,550 in 2020. Those 2020 numbers just came out. So if we averaged all this out, there would be an average yearly wage growth of $1,910 per year gained for materials engineers. If we were to forecast this into the future, by 2026, the average base salary for a materials engineer would be $111,267. And by 2030, they would make a little over $120,000 a year just as a base salary. Interestingly, the highest paying places in the country for materials engineers was actually found to be in the state of Maryland, New Mexico, and Louisiana. Definitely not the places you would think that would pay materials engineers the greatest salary. So that covers the compensation of materials engineers. What is the job market like? Is it challenging to land a job as a materials engineer? Well, the first thing to understand is the material engineering workforce is very tiny compared to some other engineering fields. In 2020, there were 24,740 employed material engineers in 2020. This is much less than the big three civil, industrial, and mechanical engineering, which all have around 300,000 employed. Electrical engineering and electronics engineering, they also have a lot of employed. So the workforce for this kind of engineering is much smaller than other engineering fields. Because it's a little bit more niche, sometimes you do have to move across state lines, across the country to find that job opportunity. And unfortunately for materials engineers, there hasn't been much job growth for them over the past two decades, according to the government. And I'll get into a big flaw of this a little bit later in the video, because there's actually quite a few job postings when you type materials engineering into Indeed right now. 
But according to the government, in 2020, there was 24,430 employed in the year 2000. By 2020, there was 24,740 employed. So according to the government, there's been a gain of around 300 jobs in 20 years. Can't be right. Well, this is what they are reporting, and I'll get into why this might be the case a little bit later in the video. The government is predicting a 2% gain in jobs from 2020 to 2030, so this would be a gain of a little less than 100 jobs in 10 years. So they're not anticipating a huge amount of job growth for materials engineers. And like I said earlier, because this is a small niche engineering occupation, it is very regional. There are certain states that have way more job opportunities than others. According to government, Texas, California, and Pennsylvania and Ohio tend to have the greatest number of employed materials engineers. And there are certain states that have very few employed. So if you want to live in one of those states, you might want to choose possibly a different engineering field. So this definitely doesn't line up with the number of job postings there are right now for materials engineers. If you go on indeed.com and you type in materials engineer, I actually found 40,462 job postings when I did a general search for materials engineering. And I think the issue is there's just so much overlap among all the different engineering fields. A lot of employers aren't looking for a specific type of engineer. They're open to many different types of engineers. They just kind of want to see that you have the ability to solve problems, apply what you learn, grow over time, have an adaptive skill set and transferable skills. So it's hilarious. 40,482 job postings for materials engineers. So the government's saying, you know, this is not a good field to go into. It's not going to grow very much. The job market is saying something completely different. There's a ton of job postings from companies such as Tesla, Apple, General Electric, even Amazon.com, I'm sure hires materials engineers, but maybe they don't call them materials engineers. So as you can see, there are weaknesses in just going by government data. As for the automation risk of materials engineers, that is also extremely low. According to willrobotstakemyjob.com, there's maybe a 2% automation risk for materials engineers. So extremely low. Finally, we get to, would this occupation be compatible with your interests and personality? According to the Myers-Briggs company, materials engineers tend to have certain Myers-Briggs personalities. In fact, the most common, well, not the most common, the most likely Myers-Briggs type to become a materials engineer is the INTJ, the architect. Second is ENTJ, the commander. Third, INTP, the thinker. And fourth, ENTP, the debater. So if you also have these Myers-Briggs characteristics, this occupation might even be more compatible than you think. Because this is an engineering field, you definitely need to be pretty hands-on and pretty analytical and really enjoy solving problems. So definitely make sure you have those kind of interests before pursuing this kind of field. The real beauty of going into an engineering field is that you're really building this transferable skill set. A lot of people that even major or really focus on materials engineers, they're not forced to stay as materials engineers. They can potentially become another type of engineer, a software developer, an engineering manager, a post-secondary teacher teaching engineering. So there's quite a few skills that you're building, transferable skills that you can use for other disciplines if you get sick of it. So you can see there are pros and cons to becoming a materials engineer in 2021. If you enjoyed this video, definitely check out my mechanical engineering video or my civil engineering video. I definitely go over their salaries, the demand for those fields. There's actually pretty good demand for civil and mechanical engineers, but I've actually never seen it this extreme with materials engineers where there's potentially more job postings than there are employed, which is ridiculous. But definitely check out some of my other videos and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.